is it going? It's Catherine. And Isaac. And, and Zippy. Zippy. Hello, Zippy. <laughs> I, I just got covered in hair. I okay, see Zippy, that. your bit's done. Okay. Oh, I got drool on my face, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring the dog into the video. Uh, yes, said. that'll be a fun anyway, idea. Anyway, how are you guys doing? It's It's been a while. Uh, um, we have been busy. Well, you've been very busy coding. Yes, I've been very busy updates. working behind the scenes. We are back. We took a bit of a sabbatical from making videos. Uh, yes. We did make a music video. We did. We yeah. did. And you also got a, another master's degree. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did. Um, yeah, I, I got psychology. a psychology degree. So yeah. that, that was fun. So yeah, we're, we're back mm -hmm. and um, we are very excited because we finally yes. can share with you the update that we've been working on. For Super templates. excited. Yes. And thank you everyone who supported Tangent Templates. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you. Uh, you guys have been an awesome community. You guys and are amazing. Love hearing your feedback. We have put together kind of a long video where I walk through all of the features that we've added to the new uh, Tangent Templates Designer Tool. Mm -hmm. I really hope you like it. I would love to hear what you think. We would love to hear yes. what you think about it. Also, do join our Facebook group at facebook.com slash group slash Amazon Create Space. Um, we, we're old school. It goes all the way back to <laughs> All the way back space. to Create Space. Um, but yeah, do come and join our Facebook group. That's really active at the moment and people are really chatting a lot in there. So yeah, I'm now going to hand you over to me in the studio so you can take a look at the new Tangent Templates updates. All right, guys, have a good one. Bye. So let's jump in and take a look at the new Tangent Designer. So when you're logged into Tangent Templates, instead of it saying Interior Designer, it now says Tangent Designer. So let's take a look at that. The reason it is called Tangent Designer is that it now also has cover creators for both paperbacks and hardbacks. There's a lot more though, so stay tuned because I'm going to go through all the new features in Tangent Templates. Another thing you see here is an important message. Please do click that because that has all the information in there about the new version of Tangent Designer, all the features that are in it and how to use them. And you also see here that there are saved projects. So you can jump to your recent projects very, very quickly. Another thing you'll see on the front is if you don't like the new versions of Tangent Designer and you're really just like, oh my gosh, take me back to how things were. The original is right here. There's a button right here, Interior Designer Original. All your projects are in there and it's exactly as it always was. So for any reason you're just not ready for the change or it's just too much right now, you can click there. But I do strongly, strongly, strongly recommend that you give the new version a try because there are some really cool things going on with that and some really cool features that it has. There's also an updated licensing. Now I'm going to talk more about that at the end of this video, but we have updated our licensing and we're giving you a lot more options with what you can do with Tangent Templates and hopefully creating a lot more flexibility for you guys and hopefully contributing back to the community a little bit. So we'll talk about that towards the end of this video. So what you need to know right away is that there are now two versions of the interior designer and I'm going to show you how that works. So I'm going to click interior pages and as uh, before you can see your trim sizes. These are all the trim sizes that KDP supports both paperback and hardback and I'm just going to click this one so you can see. Now you have your bleed options so again you can see from the little icon here that if your book has margins around the outside that's like a white edge around the outside you want to say no bleed. But for a lot of low content books especially things like composition books where the uh, image bleeds right to the edge of the page then you're going to want to say yes. So for the most part I usually select yes unless I know I'm going to do something that really has the images like within the margins. So we're going to say bleed. Now you can select the sizing of your book so this sets the margins correctly for you. Now don't worry if you do end up going over the size that you've selected it does readjust for you. So I'm just going to select under 150 pages for our project. Now you can see here the designer version this is a little bit different. We actually have two versions of the designer tool. 
Now, the optimized version is pretty much the old version of Tangent Templates. It has a couple of new features. The main one is that it gives you color. It gives you the option to include color in your designs, but it's basically the same as the original Tangent Templates. Another big difference between the two versions is that the optimized version saves your projects in the cloud. So if you are using Tangent Templates on multiple devices, if you use the optimized version, that is like the old version of Tangent Templates, you can still get your projects from any device. So if you're using multiple devices, you can share your projects across those devices. Your old projects, if you're an existing Tangent Template user, you've been using it for a while, your old projects will be in the optimized designer version. The fully featured version is a new platform, so you'll have to start new projects on that, but I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it. So there's kind of a little bit of a trade off there, but what I recommend is finish off your projects in the optimized version and start your new projects in the fully featured and give that a shot. And again, if you really hate all of it, if you're just not ready for change at all, the oldest, oldest original tangent templates is right here, interior designer original. So I think the best thing I can do is show you my demo project that has all the new features showcased. So you can take a look at those. So here we go. I'm going to go to my recent projects and I have this demo project here. Now, the first thing you can probably see is there's color, which is a huge change. And we've put a lot of ways of doing color in here, which I think you're going to have a lot of fun with. So I'm going to show you those in a moment. Another thing that's awesome is that now you have images. You can upload your pictures to Tangent Templates. So this makes for some really cool looking designs. You can do so much with this now. There's a lot of flexibility. Another thing is you can upload your own fonts. So those are a few big changes off the bat. So I hope you'll be really excited about those. So let's start out talking about color and how you can design a page like this. And what's really amazing about this is really you can design something like this in seconds. So if you take a look under each page, and this is in the pages tab here, you'll see there's four icons. The first one inserts a blank page after the selected page. The second one allows you to duplicate this page as many times as you'd like. So you just click that and put sort of two times or three times if you'd like to include this page multiple times. And you have a rocket ship that loads up presets. And we're going to talk more about that shortly. And also you have your little trash can to delete a page. So those are the controls under each of the pages. So you're probably going to be using these quite a lot. KDP now has two options for colored books. It has the premium books, which look fantastic, but they are a little bit pricey, especially if you go over 50 pages. But there's also now the standard color which actually looks pretty cool. I, I've been ordering a few of them and I think you like them. So you have options for printing colored books now on KDP that are maybe a little bit more affordable than they used to be. So this is great for making workbooks, coaching books. And as you can see, I did this like Airbnb one. If you look on things like Etsy, that's a huge niche because people who have Airbnbs want to create books for their Airbnbs. And as I said, our licensing has changed. So I'm going to talk about that more towards the end of this video, but it opens up a lot more options for what you can do with these books. So let me show you how you create a page like this. So I'm going to click the blank page and that actually copies the background color from the previous page as well, which is really nice. First of all, put some text on the page, just like the old tangent templates, uh, 16 keywords. I think the font I was using for this was Josephine Slab. So we've actually added a lot more fonts to the designer tool and we, we have the ability to upload fonts as well. So I'll show you how that works in a moment. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. There we go. There's also a lot more text options and we'll go through these as we work through our projects. So we'll put that at the top. It should snap to place in the middle. If it doesn't, you have all these options to align things on the page. So you can actually move things around. That'll put in the corner at the top, bottom, 
center. And what I really like is this vertical center and horizontal center. These are really nice because if you have it sort of over here and you don't want to lose your vertical spot, you can just center it horizontally. And the same is true if you like, you like it being placed over there, but you want it vertically centered. There we go. It just jumps to uh, center it vertically. And of course you have things like rotation. Uh, you can see there's a rotation box there. If you want to actually type it in manually, you can rotate things manually as well. So you have a lot of options here with your text. So let's put that back up at the top. You can see there where it snaps to the middle, that little uh, dashed line shows up. So we'll put it up there. Now we're going to add some boxes. So again, just like with the old tangent templates, grab your box and you're going to put it in here. Now I'm kind of eyeballing it, but we can do it more precisely using the arrange tab here. So I'm going to use width and I'm going to change that to three inches. Now, if you have main, you see the maintain ratio box, if you have that checked, then it's going to hold the shape of the box. It's not going to skew. If you uncheck that, then you can skew it. So I need to uncheck that to set the height as well. Actually, I like it at 0.5. That's pretty close to where I want it. But if you have that maintain ratio box checked, then when you change the width, the height will change in proportion. There we go. We have our box here. It doesn't look quite like these ones yet. So let's go and fix that. So I'm going to click on the box and I'm going to go and style it. So let's go across to style. Now this tab is really fun. You can see there's a lot of options here. You've got all these pretty colors. So the way this works is it gives you the different elements of whatever or the, the different aspects of whatever element you're working with. So if you're working with a box, you get fill, uh, which obviously is the fill inside of the box. So you click here. Uh, oops, I haven't got it selected. If you click there, it will change the color of the box to any of these colors. You have the border, which obviously is the edge of the box. Um, so I'm going to select, let's do that one so you can see, actually, let's make it red so you can see it. And you can change the border thickness. So there you go. If you want to put a border on there, you can do that. If you want to get rid of the border, you can just click the little minus beside it to get rid of it. Now there's no border. You also have corner radius, which I love. You can click on the corner radius and it gives you these nice curved boxes. Now I don't like that color. So what I'm going to do is show you the palette selector. And the palette selector, we have worked so long and hard on this, putting together these colors, trying to find like really cool color combinations, trending colors, and they are all here. There's so many palettes for you to play with. So you can see there's a lot of different color combinations that you can use here to get different styles, different vibes, sort of whether it's shabby chic or unicorns, or we even put at the end, uh, you've got a little pride palette there just all the different palettes that you might want to use for your designs. So I'm just going to select use palette on the pretty pastels and you can actually have multiple palettes in here. So I'm going to put the mauve moves in there as well. So what's really nice about the palettes is this opens up a lot more ways to set the color on your box here. So you can just go in and you've got two ways of doing it really from here. You can just select the fill and choose the swatch like that. Or you can use the color picker. And the color picker is really fun because you can use this to just grab a color from anywhere on your screen. This becomes really useful if you've added photographs or pictures to your pages because you can pull colors straight from that picture. Uh, you can use it to just grab a color there from the palettes like that. Or you can grab a color that you've already used on the page. So, I mean, I can even grab it from the text there. And you can actually grab from your desktop or from anywhere else. So you have a lot of options here for how you choose colors for your design. Let's see what I did. I used, oh, I used these colors here. So let's go back. Uh, we had a sort of sage color like that. Now, okay, so we have our box. This is our first box made here. Now I'm just gonna copy and paste that. And um, we have eight of these, I think. So I'm going to do that eight times four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And what's really nice about this is that you can lay them out like this, select them all, 
And now we go back to our Arrange tab here and you can align those to the left and then you can do Distribute Space Evenly and boom, it just lays them out for you like that. So really, really valuable tools here. So it's as easy as that. You can just set all these boxes just by distributing them. So I'm going to copy and paste that and put another row of these over here. And also what you can do to make this easier to use, actually, let's change the colors on these ones first. So we'll change these by going to uh, our style here and I'm going to change the color to, let's use that one. And I can change the color on those. Now, what's really nice is that you can actually group these all together by just going to arrange and clicking group at the bottom. And if you group them, you can move them all around as one object. So it, it becomes a little bit more easy to manipulate those uh, and move them around. I'm just going to put that up there and I'm going to bring, oop, I'm just going to select these and bring these up here. And what you can do, actually I'll group those and we can make sure those are both aligned to the top. So grouping is really nice to really make sure everything is beautifully aligned here. Those look good. So we also want to add an area for writing. So I'm just going to pull that up a little bit. There we go. Keep it in the middle. And let's add another box under here. And this is going to be for notes. So we'll just draw another box. And I'm going to again give it curvy corners because I think curvy corners always look nice. And we're going to fill it with the same colors that we've used here. So we'll just grab that. And you can do fill space. So this is the same as in the previous tangent templates, but now you can give your lines, you can actually uh, change the color of your lines, which is really fun. So if you want to, you could select, I don't know, let's do maybe purple lines. And you go back to your fill space and select college rule, and it should fill that out for you with some lines. Now there's an extra line at the top there. You can just look at this and see if there's any extra lines. It tends to add extra ones at the top and bottom that you might not need. It kind of depends on the size of your box. So just check for those. But there we go. That looks pretty nice. Um, if you want to move these around, just make sure that you've selected the lines because those are individual objects, which is nice because it means you can actually change the colors of individual lines. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I can change the colors of the lines if I want to or you can just group them to keep them all the same. So there we go. That's pretty much how you create a page like this, the 16 keywords page, very short space of time. Let me show you how you change the font. So I'm going to click on the text here. And if I go to, uh, let's see, type, if you have a font already, you can upload it very easily by just clicking upload a font. If you don't have a font already, I recommend Google fonts. These should be safe to use in your project and you can browse through them, find some really neat looking fonts, explore them, search for them and find a font that you really like. So let's see, I liked, I found one yesterday that I liked. Let me have a look. It was called Edu. This one. Okay. So I'm going to grab this font and what you do, click on the font, just go download family. That should download to your computer. There it is. It's a zip file going to open the zip file and uh, there's my font and now if I go to upload a font and uh, I've downloaded it there's the font it's the TTF file I'm going to say open and now all the fonts that I've added should appear in this little box here these are my custom fonts that I've uploaded myself so I'm going to click that and boom, that's how quick it is to upload and add a new font to Tangent Templates. Super easy, super quick. And a lot of the fonts that you can grab from Google look so cool. You can have a lot of fun with that. So that's how you create a page very quickly that you like the look of, that looks cool. And you can, what's really nice about this is you can select everything and go to style and it gives you all the individual colors that are being used here. So you have this green at the top. You have this other green, the lighter green underneath, and then you have the black for uh, the lines and the purple for the lines here. And you can just change any of these. So you can make big changes in one go and really experiment with your color schemes. 
So I, I really love this. I really love that you can just play with this and change your color schemes around with minimal work there. We'll leave it how it was, it looked nice. <laughs> but there we go. So you can really play with these color schemes, have a lot of fun with that, especially with all the different palettes that you have access to. It makes it really quick. I mean, like if we want to change to the mauve palette, we can do that. We'll change the background first of all. Oh yeah, you also have um, this option for changing colors as well. So if you click on the little swatch here, you have a more traditional color palette. So you can play with this, move it around, and you can see it, it updates live. So you really get to see how it looks on your screen. So that's really nice. I'm gonna just uh, switch to the mauve palette. So let's choose that background. And let's see, I'm gonna select my boxes here and scroll up and let's see i'll put the mauve mauve uh, palette at the top there so we can pick from it and we're gonna choose that color for the top we're gonna choose that color and now we have a kind of a more muted look and if i want to make the notes a different color uh, i can absolutely do that for example that one i don't like i can change that um but the idea is that the palettes sort of look nice together, that the, the colors complement each other well. And if you're not happy with them, then you can go and make them lighter, change them up. So yeah, you have all these cool options here. And don't forget to change your text as well. You can change the text color to match the palette as well. So there we go. Just a kind of different style, a different vibe for this for this page. So have a lot of fun with that. I hope you enjoy using all the colors and experimenting with the different ways of uh, using those. So let's talk about images now. So we've added the ability to upload images, which just creates a whole new world of design options. Now, one thing I want to say, let's talk about AI for a moment. <gasps> oh, I'm scared of talking about AI because people have a very strong opinions on both sides of this. My view on it is that it's a tool, it's here. There's not really much we can do about it, whether we like it or whether we don't like it. AI exists. As far as I know, KDP don't have any policy about using AI content at this point. I do think that if you upload images to your books or put images in your books that are kind of wonky with wonky hands, you might get bad reviews and that would probably fall under their current disappointing experience policy. So if you do use AI, I recommend being very careful with it and making your images look good, making sure they look good. This actually is an AI generated image. What I want to say, a couple, of, a couple more things to say about AI. First of all, yes, I know some of you question the ethics of AI. I think there is some misinformation out there that it's like literally stealing and collaging from other people's artwork. That's not really how it works. What it's doing is more piecing together. It's, it's learning from art and piecing it together. I know there are ethical questions about how it is learnt from art, but that's a whole philosophical conversation that we can get into another time. As I say, I'm just kind of going with it's a tool, it's here, and there's probably not a lot we can do about it. So we're using the best tools that we have. So for this project, I have used AI images and photographs. So all of the additional content in here, this lady is completely AI generated. She does not exist. This room is AI generated. This Airbnb is AI generated. None of these things exist. What I want to say about tangent templates is that tangent templates does not currently include any AI elements. And at this point, we don't have any plans to include any. So all of the elements in tangent templates are hand drawn by either me or our artists or digitally drawn by me or our artists or Isaac, he's done some of them. We do not use AI for any of the elements that are included in tangent templates. So if you're uncomfortable with AI, that's fine. You just don't upload any AI images. For this demo project, I've uploaded some, but that's just additional content. It is not built into the core of tangent templates. All of our images in tangent templates are proper 
art that is created by artists. So I just want to put that out there for anyone who is feeling kind of uncomfortable or weird about AI. Cool. So here is an image that I made in mid journey and I just uploaded this and dropped it on this page. So very simple and it looks great. So I'll show you how to upload an image in just a moment. And then I added some text to this and these are just a couple of lines. So you can add lines very easily by clicking line. Uh, there's a line here. Whoops. I just, uh, there's a line here. I'm going to make it a bit thicker so you can see it. Do, 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 do. And if I want to pull a color from the page already, I'm just going to use the dropper and I can make it pink. There it is. So there's my pink line. Now I can also grab from this image. So if I want to make it the same color as her face, I can do that. If I want to make it the same color as her shirt, I can do that. So uh, you have a lot of power to really match any design elements that you're making with the photographs that you're using. So let's actually show you how this works. I'm going to create a new page and upload an image. So let's start a blank page and I'm going to go to uploads. Now these are some folders from other things I've been working on. So the way it works is you just go, actually, I'm going to make a new folder for my image here and I'm going to call this know, demo folder and I'm going to add that and I'm going to go into my folder and I'm going to say upload images from my desktop and I'm going to use these owls. So if you're in a folder, you can upload multiple images and they will all go into your folder there. See, I did two at a time there. If you are not in a folder, it will create a bundle for you and it'll be called TT bundle. So if you upload a bunch of images, it will just put them in a new folder for you called a TT bundle with a number. So I'm going to grab my owl image here and it's as simple as that. So all I did, you go to uploads, you upload your image, choose your owl, open that will go, uh, that will either go into your general folder or it will go into a folder that you create. There is your owl there. So that's an image. Now, what's really nice is that you can see if I scale this up too big, because I didn't upscale this image, it actually gives me a warning and says that the image is now larger than the original size. This is really good to know because if you have like a three inch image and you make it huge, it's probably going to look blurry when you print it. So this really tells you the limits of printing to the point where it's not going to blur. So that's really helpful to have this information here. Now you can also add a border. So if I select my border, what's really cool is that I can actually choose a color from the image itself. So it will really go with it. I'm going to up the border thickness there so you can see that. Let's make it, we'll make it a chunky border. There we go. Um, that looks good. So you can put your border on there. I'm going to make it a little bigger just so you can see the design. There we go. And now you can add some writing paper underneath it. So we just grab a box, put the box underneath do do, and I'm going to use the same colors. So I can go to style. I can select these colors here and I'll make my border bigger on this. And I'm going to make the fill color of the box. Well, let's make it a very light color from the owl. There we go. And I can put the fill space. Now let's do graph paper for this one just to be different. So, oh wait, uh, lines and dots. What color do we want the lines and dots? Uh, let's make them dark gray. So fill space and let's make this graph paper. There it is. So you can make this dot grid. You can make it graph paper. You can make it lines. Um, and this one we did lines. Uh, I have a page down here where I did dot grid. If I zoom in, you can see that's just dot grid paper works exactly the same way. You just create a box and fill it and choose your colors. So yeah, that's how you add an image to tangent templates and design with it. So it looks pretty awesome. Now you have some other design options here. I mean, this is another page I made. I, I really like this font. Which font did I use here? This is, this is, let's see, this is the Sacramento font I used there. And what I did with these boxes is I used the opacity option. So I made these 70% opacity. You can see here, if I set this a bit lower, they become very see-through indeed. 
if I make it 50, it's a little bit see-through, 70, just a smidgen see-through. And I really like this effect. I used one of the images from TT Images. It's actually from the infographics. Let's see, I think it was that one there. So I just used this image here. And what you do is you use the arrange. So if you go to arrange, you just send that image to the back. You add that image, send it to the back, and it acts like a little, I don't know, watermark, background image. Looks really nice. So that's another thing you can do with these. Oh yeah, I also wanted to show you these planners and how I did these because these were actually super simple to do and they look great. I really like how these look. So what I did is, in fact, let's do this one. So I'm gonna make a blank page. And the way I did this was I went to TT Images and I went to Yearly Trackers. And this kind of shows you the power of ungrouping as well. So I got this planner page. You can see it's got these thick lines and I was like, mm, those don't really go with the vibe of what I'm doing. So I go to the SVG editor, ungroup under arrange. And now I can go and click that line and delete it. And you can actually go and change each of these dots individually, but I don't recommend that. I don't recommend dragging them around because otherwise it's going to end up a mess. So now I've got rid of the lines. I'm just going to group that back together again, actually. So I go to arrange and just group it again. So now it's one big image again, and I can change the color on that. So I'm going to make it ah, that nice purple color. And then I just go to my uploads and I should have some little panels that I made earlier. And ah, that's a nice one. So I'm just going to add my actually Let's see my, uh, oh, I've got them there, my demo project. Let's have another look at those. Let's see. Oh, I have a little Parisian one here. Let's add the Parisian one. I kind of like that. Um, and I'm just going to make this big. Fills in the space there. There we go. And then I can change this, drag it into place. And then you just add your text at the top, uh, planner. 2023 planner. I'm going to drag that up, make it a little bit bigger. There we go. And uh, again, I can just change the text color. Uh, I'm lazy. I just tend to use this picker so much. Like, okay, there we go. That matches. We'll align it to the middle. And that's how you can just create a planner page like that super simply. And it looks great. I really like this one. This I had a lot of fun with this. So I put this panel here. Again, these are additional images that I created in mid journey. They're not in tangent templates. They're something I just made and uploaded using the upload. I also put in a, a box here with the fill, as you saw before, the line fill. And just by changing the colors and changing the color scheme up, you can get these really neat effects. Now, I wanna show you one more thing with the palettes that I haven't shown you yet. If we go, actually, let's start a new page. If we go to create a box, I'm gonna show you how you can make some new color schemes and how you can create custom color schemes. So I'm gonna to go to the palette selector and you'll see you have this custom option, which allows you to create a new custom palette. Now you have a couple of ways to do this. One way is just to choose a, a palette that you already like. So we could take this dual bright one and go create custom palette. And what that does is it creates a new palette in your custom tab called dual bright custom. And what's great is you can just go in here and add any more colors that you want. So you can either create them here from the big color palette and you just go add swatch and there it is. You can also do this, and I love this. It has this gradient option where you can choose a single color, two colors, or three colors. We're gonna go crazy. We're gonna say three colors. And the way this works is that you use the color picker or the, the palettes here, and you choose whatever color you want. So I'm actually gonna do a pastel one. In fact, let's start a new palette. So I'm gonna do a new one. I'm gonna call it Catherine Gradient and I'm gonna say add, and I'm gonna go add new swatch, and we're gonna to go to gradient, and I'm gonna say three colors, 
and we're going to change this one first of all. So I want to use pastels. So I'm going to start with this color and then I want my gradient to also involve this pink and I want my gradient to finish on this yellow. And this is like magic. I love this so much. And you say how many steps you want. Now each step is going to be a swatch that it adds to the palette. So hopefully if I click this, it's going to add 15 colors that take it from this color to this color to this color. So let's watch. There it is. I've just created a new palette based off those three colors. Now you can add a lot more steps. You can also add another gradient to this. So if that's not enough for you in that palette and you want to add more, let's just do two colors this time. So we can use the color picker and let's say we're going to add some, let's say we want to add some purple and blue to this. So I'm going to choose that color and I'm going to go and choose this blue. And this time I'm only going to add five steps and we're going to add the gradient. And there you go. You can see it's just added another gradient. So if you want to create color schemes, this is an awesome way to do it. You can create your custom palettes here. One more thing I want to show you with palettes is that you can actually also create a palette based off an image. So I really like this image that I uploaded. So if I go to my uh, editor there, you can see when I select the image, you can see right here, it has this option, create color palette. So I click that. And now if I go to my palette selector, there it is. It's created a palette from that image. So that's another really awesome uh, thing you can do with this to create another custom palette that you can use. So I can just add that palette now. And there it is. So I can play with that and I can change things up using these colors from this image. So that's another really, really powerful tool that we have put in here for you. One last thing I want to tell you about images is that you can also filter your images. So you can do some fun things with these. Uh, if you want, you can grayscale it. Ooh, I hate that. Um, but it's great if you're making monochrome books like black and white books. You can change the saturation, get different effects with that, change the brightness up or down. Really experiment with how things look. Isaac's a big fan of pixelation. It kind of gives it that sort of like computerized look. It's kind of fun and you have noise if you just want to turn it into um, something more blurry or pixelated, you can play with these. So you do have all these options. You've got some filters here as well, like your sepia, vintage, technicolor to really change how that looks. So, so yeah, I think you've got a lot of options in here so that you can change your images and really play with those. So I hope you have a lot of fun with those. So there's a lot of nice effects you can get with this. Like on this workbook, uh, I also use the opacity on this box here, you can see I set the opacity to 75. And what I like about that is it just gives you a hint of that image behind. So really all this design is, it look, I love how this design looks. It's just some text up here. Uh, which font did I use? Let's see. I used, it was one of the system ones. There we go. I used the Carla font for this. I love sometimes just using lowercase letters. It looks neat doing that. And we actually have an option here for uh, changing letters. So you can do uppercase or lowercase or capitalize the first word. Um, so I've got the lowercase. There we go. I can just put that there. So that's how I did that text. I did the box here with the low opacity and I just put a picture in here behind it and just make sure that your picture is arranged uh, center back there. So that's really all it takes to make an image, uh, to make a, a page like this. It's really, really quick. It's only one, two, three, like four elements, even though it looks a lot more complicated than that. And as I said, that's an AI image that was uh, generated there, which is pretty incredible. The uh, mid journey, the new version of mid journey, the photographic images look pretty amazing. This room does not exist. <laughs> so. Also, I, I did some images here again. These are AI generated these ones. What I did with this is I put some boxes and for these images, I actually put a border. The way I got this effect here is that I put a border that is actually just the same color as the background. So you can see how those work there. And I use the uh, distribute evenly tools under a range uh, to space them out perfectly. So what I love with tangent templates is that you really get this very precise 
uh, spacing and alignment that is really, really nice. So the Airbnb one, what I did with this is I added lines to it there. And another thing that we've put into tangent templates is shapes. So this shape is actually just a cloud that I grabbed from there, change the color on and just put that behind the image. So you can use these shapes for all kinds of uh, different effects. I made a flow chart here and I really like the flow chart. You've got sort of trying, <laughs> this is just a triangle, but just by putting a triangle in the background, you really get a sort of different uh, branding vibe for your page there. And I did the same flow chart. I just changed the color scheme up and put a box behind it. So you get that look behind it as well. So you can get very different styles very easily, very quickly, just with lines, boxes, using different shades. Uh, I think this used some of these mauve shades here to make this one. This is just layering some of the tangent template images. So for this one, I used uh, one of the infographics here. I used this infographic and then I just used these little icons. I think these were from the map icon set in the images. Uh, there's the map icons there. So I just used some of these icons and put them on there. And then there's some dot grid paper that I added to it. So what's really nice is if you're making something like a workbook, once you find a style you like, and for this one, I mean, all I did was I put a yellow box and then I used one of the TT vintage images to create like this border effect and put that there. Once you've created a style that you like, you can just duplicate this for your workbook. So, I mean, you can duplicate it as many times as you like. I'm gonna say two times. And then what you can do is just delete this content and put something, oh, I didn't select it all. You can just delete this content, change it, module two, and you have that page ready to put something else in there. So it's really, really quick to create a whole workbook or to create any style of book. Another thing that's really, really nice with this is that you can go to make template, check it out. We can call this, we'll call it purple workbook and we'll save that. Now, if you go, let's start a new page. If you go to the little rocket ship and we go to save pages, there it is. So you've kind of created your own template right there. So you can use that across all your projects. You can save that, use it across all your projects, basically make your own templates to use and save them in tangent templates. So that's a really, really powerful tool there. So again, you just go make template and give it a name and it will save that into your save templates. And you just grab it from the rocket ship icon. Now you can do so much. You can make so many cool designs with this. Again, I use the cloud shapes here and I use the arch shape. So you have these shape options here. I just use the arch shape and I kind of led two arches and gave one a border. You can see that has a border. So it gave it this look. I used some more clouds here and I just picked a little emoji from the TT image. I love the little smiley faces. You can put them on anything. This smiley face is actually in the weather section. So I just grabbed, it was that one. I just used that little smiley face and you can put it anywhere. Um, you can stick it down there and you can use the picker to go and change the color to something like that. Ah, you can't see that. Let's do that one. So there you go. You can you can see how uh, you can create really simple designs just using shapes. Like this doesn't have anything special in it. It's all just shapes and that little emoji. Now, what you might notice with this one is the awesome text on Dream Journal. And I'll show you how I did that. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just duplicate this page and I'll delete the text. Uh, you have to click slightly under, just a tip with curved text. Um, if you're having a hard time selecting curved text, just click under it. So I'm going to put some text in here and I'm going to type dream journal. Let's make it a little bit smaller. That's a bit big. So I'm going to make it more like, let's say 28. That looks good. You can also space out the characters. So this, this is kind of a nice effect that you can really like have your characters spaced out wide there. Uh, let's put that back to zero for now. And if you want to make this curved, actually, the other thing you can do is put a border on it. 
So I'm just going to add a border. Uh, let's pop that color. Make it a little bit thicker so you can see it clearly. Uh, let's see, we'll go to uh, six. There we go. So you can see this, this text now has a border on it. And I'm going to make it center aligned. And I want to make this curved. So all I'm going to do is go down here and it says convert to curved text. So you click that. Now you have curved text to work with. So you can drag that around to get it exactly where you want it to be. You can also do some fun things like move it here with the curved start point. I'm just going to set it back to zero so it's in the middle. You can change the spacing like that once you've got it curved. So that looks pretty nice. And yeah, that's that's how you do a uh, curved text. You still have all the options that you have with anything else here. So you can still change the color. If we want to change the fill of the text, we can make that, like, I don't know, purple. Yeah, you have all these options that you can do with curved text. So I'm a big fan of curved text. I think it looks really nice, uh, maybe on a splash page, sort of inside your journal, like the first couple of pages in your journal. But this looks great for making sort of like a teenage journal. I mean, you can have pages like this with dot grids inside. Like there is so much you can do with this. So another great use for text with a border, and this is just such a fun, easy thing that you can do, is that you can add text to coloring book pages. So a way you can do this, and this is such a popular start at the moment, I think Sasha O'Hara, who actually was in our very first coloring book course, and went on to become one of the most famous coloring book authors in America. I think she was actually the first to pioneer this. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think she was. Now quite a lot of people are doing this style and it's super easy to do with tangent templates. Let me show you how it works. So we're just going to add a page and we're going to go to our uploads. And let me see, I think I have some coloring pages in here. So let me grab that coloring page got some pretty flowers. Again, just a mid journey image that I uh, made here with some flowers. We're just going to put that there. Make sure if you are using bleed, you want to make sure that your design is all the way in the margins. What you don't want to do, what will trigger errors at KDP is if you have little floating elements in the margins. So if you have like orphan text or like a little star or something there, that's the kind of thing that will cause problems at KDP. But if your design goes all the way to the edges, it should be fine if you have bleed selected. So we put our coloring page on here and all you do to get the cool coloring effect is, um, I don't know, we're going to say flower power. That's a nice thing to say. We're going to make this text really big. So let's go to our text. Let's make it like, I don't know, 60, hmm, bigger than that. Let's do 120. That looks better. Let's make it bold, make it a bit chunkier. And we're going to make that text white. And then we're just going to add a border, a black border, and up the thickness on that. So uh, where do we want to go to? Probably about 10. There. Great. That's how you do it. And you can change the font. Different fonts give very different styles. Some of the script fonts. Some of them are kind of illegible. Some of them look great in coloring pages. What I tend to do is, oops, if I select the text, I tend to bring this small and then drag it out like that. Not sure on that font. Let's see. You can go. That one got a bit big. So again, we're just going to use the size. Let's make it back to 100. If it gets big like this, you can just make it, you can just drag it to get rid of the extra space. It tends to happen when you're working with a lot of different fonts and you just put it on. There. So there we go. You can play with this forever. I mean, we can use the font that we just uploaded. There you go. And that's really just how you do a coloring page. So you can see I made a few of them here. I did the bright lights, big city, <laughs> caffeine added. Now we wait. So that's how you can make coloring book pages really, really quickly, just using text, white text with a black border and sticking it over a coloring book page. Now let's talk about templates. So one thing we have done, if you start a new page and we're going to go to the little rocket ship icon, you can see that we still have the presets. These are the same presets as before. We have your saved pages that we talked about 
and you have templates. So all the static templates from Tangent Templates are now available in the Interior Designer. And what's really fun about this is that you can edit these, colorize them, change them up, change the elements. In fact, let me show you with the battleships. So here is the original battleships paper. So if you saw what I did, I just clicked the rocket ship and selected the battleships. Now, if you look at my pages, you'll see that here, this is the finished, and <laughs> this is my finished adaptation of the battleships. So it's quite a big jump from this to this. Let me show you how I did it. So we've got the battleships here. So it comes in as one big image. And what you're going to do is you're going to make sure you clicked on the image. It should say SVG editor. And then you're in the arrange tab and you're just going to click on group. And what this does is actually gives you access to all the individual elements on the page. So now you can be like me, the space hero. And you might need to adjust the text a little bit. That was like a small box, so we can just drag that out. An opponent, we can have evil space alien. So you can change the text up. We can get rid of this battleship because now we're going to change this to be our sci-fi battleships. So I'm going to go into TT images and let's see, we're going to go robots and monsters and let's pick a little spaceman. There he is. So instead of having the battleship, we can put a spaceman in there. Yay. And of course you can change all the names of the different ships here to be spaceships. So you can put like, I don't know, I, I did them all here. I changed it to like... Vorgon shuttle carrier and Triffid destroyers and Starbug shuttles. Bonus points if you get any of these references. <laughs> my my uh, vintage sci-fi nerd comes out. What I also did was I added a cool image behind. So I have to change the text first of all. I'm going to make the text white. In fact, I'm going to make everything white. So let's change everything to white. We'll go through all of these. White, white, white. And we'll make the background black so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. And now you can go and get your uh, image. So I have my galaxy image there. And I'm going to choose this option, make background. Boom, it sticks it behind. And what's nice about make background is that is now locked in place. So you do make background, it locks that image in place behind everything else which means that you can still select things over the top of it. If you don't have it set as make background, it gets kind of hard to like click on things and move them around. So I recommend doing make background. If you don't like the background anymore, to get rid of it, just go to project, artboard and remove background image and that will take it away. So the only thing I would say about this is this is an activity book. It's kind of hard to write on this. So you probably want to get a box. In fact, what I'm going to do Pull this box out here. I'm going to make this text. I'm going to make all the lines here. I'm going to make these pink. Let's see which pink we're going to use. I think we're going to use that pink. Now, that doesn't look great at the moment, but we have this box, and I'm going to fill this box with white. There, get rid of the border. And I'm going to move the box to the back. Um, it went behind the background. And I'm going to select the box and just put it here behind this. So now you'd be able to write on that. Um, you probably want to move this around just a little bit. You can use the arrow keys for fine tuning as well. Um, so there you go. That's how you can make a really awesome activity book. Oh, the other thing I did was I changed the opacity uh, on the box. So let me just change the opacity there so you can see. Uh, what did I have it at? I think I had it at like uh, maybe a bit higher. 70. There you go. So now you can actually use this as an activity book and write in those spaces if you wanted to play space battleships with someone. So that's how you can adapt a template. There's some more examples here of how I've done it. I used the sermon paper here and added some images. What's really nice is it when you ungroup, it even breaks up the elements. So like this cross, for example, um, I've used a darker shade behind for the horizontal part and a lighter shade for the part at the at the front and also you can change fonts so you can just click on here go type and just change all the font in one go so that looks really nice i've done a couple more here i did the aura page 
I don't recommend particularly doing what I did. It looks cool, but it took me a little while to just click through each of the elements and send them to the back here to get uh, this little rainbow aura. But it does look cool. So, I mean, you can always make your template and then you don't have to do it again once you've done that. You can do some quite clever things with this. It does ungroup the images individually. So, for example, if you use the makeup chart, you could actually just delete the closed eye. If you wanted to have both eyes open, you could delete the eye and just copy and paste the other one and mirror it. You can add just your own elements to any of these pages. I mean, if you don't like the model on the fashion sketchbook, you could change that to something else. You have a lot of options here. And it's great because, I mean, you could take, for example, the cruise journal. And if you got rid of the anchor and just change some of the um, text, you could maybe change that for like, I don't know, a, a trip out, like an excursion or a plane trip. You, you can use any of our pages and change them to whatever you need them to be. So you have a lot of options here. You can see I took like our story paper here and adapted it to horror. So you've got a spooky story with a scary theme and skulls behind it. Or you can just even take the college rule paper. You can see here I used this image behind is actually from TT Images postage. Uh, the, the postage elements there, it was one of the stamps. You could add anything you like. I mean, if you want to get rid of the postage, you can just put in, um, I like the robots and monsters. You could put a little, little guy looks cute. You can put this little guy behind, um, just change the color and send it to the back. So you, you can really customize what you're doing. You can change the individual lines as well. So if you're not, if you want to have your own color scheme, you can uh, change that line. You can select all of these lines and make them red. Tons of options there. So you can even just adapt the, the college rule paper. You can also use our images. So this is the debt snowball. It's in the finance. In fact, I'll show you uh, if I create another page. You go to the TT images and in the finance section, I just grab the debt snowball. So we have a bunch of like, these aren't really templates, but they kind of are because you can just fill a whole page with them. So I just put the debt snowball in there. And what I did was I put the text that says, where's my text gone? There's my text. Make it say freedom. And again, I can just make this really big. How does that one look? Oh, that's a different font. <laughs> that's one I uploaded. You can put that along the, the bottom, and change the sizing on it. There we go. And you can change the opacity on that. So if we make it color, bring the opacity down, it kind of gives it a different feel, a different style. You can change uh, the color on this whole sheet here. You can see that like you can change things to fit your corporate colors. And then this text, I'll show you how I did that. You just go uh, to the side of your page here. You put on a text box and then I just did it like this. Hit enter and just and you can change the line spacing. So uh, from type. You can just do the line height there so you can spread it out just like character spacing but vertically. So you have a ton of choices here when you're designing your pages like that. So a couple more things I did. This page is fun because what I did was I took one of the TT images, the moon elements, where are they? The lunar phases. And I actually just took this image here and I ungrouped it using arrange ungroup. And then from there, I could just color each of the moons individually. So you can see what I did there. I just colored them all using uh, this pastel palette. So that was a fun thing I did there. I did a couple more pages. Let's see how I did this. Oh, this is a nice effect. So the way I did this one is this is an arch. So I used the arch. If I can select it, there it is. That's the arch from the shapes here. I used this arch and I layered a couple of those. I put a square with dot grid. So that's just a box filled with dot grid. And then I got this effect by just using one of the TT images. I used one of the vintage flourishes. If you'll notice what I did with this is I actually put a border on it. So now it looks like it's part of that image. I made the border the same color as the arch. So it gave it that nice effect there. Here I used a panel. I'm going to talk about these panels in a moment, but uh, we have these cool panels and I'm going to show you those when I show you covers and also 
there's some type here where I used a drop shadow. So a drop shadow is really easy. You just go here in your text. I'm in my text editor. I go to style and drop shadows right there. So you just say show the drop shadow and you can change the color of the drop shadow. And of course you can move it around. So you can move it over there. You can move it over here. You have all these nice options with the drop shadow. So that gets some good effects there. And you can blur it as well. You can really play with that and get different effects going. So I have another big feature to show you and it's called Picture Book. And a lot of you have asked for something like this and I love it. I have found it really, really helpful to use. It's great if you want to make art books or if you want to make coloring books. So basically, if you have a lot of images, whether you've drawn them yourself, whether you hire an artist, whether you purchase them or use AI, which I know is a little bit controversial. And as I say, we'll probably talk about that a bit more um, at some point soon. However, you get your images and it's at your responsibility if you upload images to this to make sure that you have all the copyrights that they're allowed to be used on the platform that you're using them on. But if you have a lot of images, you can put them into your book very quickly and very easily and create a book that way with them. So I'm going to go to interior pages and we're going to start a square book. I love 8.5 by 8.5. That's one of my favorite sizes because I love those square books. They look so cool. So I'm going to select bleed and the margins. I think we're going to keep this book under 150 pages, but it can be big. You can upload as many images as you like for your coloring book. I think usually coloring books are around sort of 50 to 100 images, maybe 50 to 60 images. So we'll start with the designer version of fully featured. And first we're going to make an art book. So. I'm going to be an artist and make my art book and I'm going to put some text that says uh, welcome to my art book as page one. I hope you enjoy it. Um, very professional and I don't know, you can add a little image to that, whatever you want to do. There's a little butterfly. Great. And you can put your copyright information, whatever you want to put in here. Uh, you can do that. There is actually a copyright page in the presets that you can use as well. Uh, there's a little template in there. So I go to my pages and now I'm going to make the rest of the book into an art book. So what I'm going to do is go to uploads and first we want to upload our images. So I think mine are in my documents here. I'm going to go paper scenes and this isn't a whole book. I think I've got about 20 images here. So I'm going to upload those. It's going to put those into a bundle called TT Bundle 10. Uh, we'll give that a moment while it uploads. Great, there they are. So here are all my images. It's put it in this bundle, TT Bundle 10. So now what I'm going to do is go to Picture Book at the bottom and I'm going to select that bundle, TT Bundle 10. You can rename it, of course. You can change it to your art images or whatever. You can choose a different color background. If you don't want the background of your pages to be white, you can change it to cream or, or whatever color you want it to be by clicking here. I'm not going to insert blank pages. I'll show you that when I do a coloring book and I'm going to say resize my images. I want them all to be scaled to fit the page. For this book, I don't want to use margins. I want them to bleed all the way to the edge of the page. So I'm not going to use margins and I'm going to say shuffle the image order because I want it to randomize the order of the images that I have. And now I click import images. And if we wait for a moment and let it roll through, you can see it working there in the background. Um, while it's working, it's always best to just leave the page up and visible so you can see what it's doing. Boom, there it is. It's taken all of my little images and put them into a book. Now, you probably want more images than this. There's only 22 or 21 here in this book. You're probably going to want a few more than that. But that is ready now for me to go and... Aren't they cute? I like these little images. That is ready for me to now go and download the PDF. And it will download that and it's ready to upload to KDP or wherever you want to upload it to as your book interior. Now, I'm going to show you the same process with a coloring book. So we'll do the same thing again. And this time again, I'm going to put an intro page. Welcome to my coloring book. Now, what I'm going to do slightly differently with this is I'm going to add a page two. 
and page two I'm actually going to make this page black so I'm going to get an image let's do the butterfly again let's put that image in there and I'm going to make the butterfly white so it's going to disappear for a moment and then I'm going to make the background black and of course I can use my range to center that perfectly so now what our project looks like we've got an intro page on page one we have this butterfly image on page two and it has a black background now the reason I'm doing this is because this is going to be our filler page on the left hand side and a lot of people who make coloring books or use coloring books like to have black pages on the left hand side because when you open your book and you start coloring in it it prevents bleed through to the next page so this is a really great way to make a coloring book so now what I'm going to do again I'm going to go to my uploads I'm going to upload some different images for this so I have some mushrooms we're going to have a mushroom book I only have a few images here just to show you quickly so it's going to put those into a bundle wait for it to do its thing there are my images so now I'm going to go back to picture book and I'm going to go select folder bundle 11 that should be my mushrooms this time I want the image background to be black I'm going to actually I'm going to make it white because on the pages I want it to be white now I'm going to say insert blank pages but instead of a blank page I'm going to select page 2 and this is my page 2 the black page with the butterfly and this time I'm going to say scale to fit page and use margins I want my images to be inside the margins so it doesn't trigger any issues with bleed and it's generally a good idea to do this with coloring book pages because they tend to have orphan elements that could go in the margins and um, cause problems when it uploads to KDP so for art books if you want if you're if you're doing color art books across the full page I recommend saying um, don't use margins let it bleed all the way to the edge but if you're doing coloring books black and white coloring books that might have weird elements around the edges keep it within the margins and that way you won't get errors when you upload it to KDP so I said use margins and shuffle image order and let's see it do its magic And there it is there's our coloring book so you can see what I mean about the left hand pages so you have these butterflies on the left with a black background and you have the mushroom picture on the right and you can see what I mean about using margins that this has fit perfectly within the margins so you shouldn't get any errors uploading this to KDP it should be perfect because each of the images fits perfectly within the margins so there you go that's how you create a coloring book in literally a minute or two using tangent templates picture book feature which you will find right here on the side tab and one more page that I enjoyed making I made this little pride rainbow and the way I made this if I ungroup that is that it's actually just semicircles it's just layered semicircles and I used the pride palette which has all the official colors uh, for the pride flag and just put those onto each of the individual semicircles and stack them on top of each other and then I did the same with the letters so I just did each letter individually so that's another really nice thing you can do just uh, designing with shapes so yeah that, that's all the interiors that I've made I'm going to talk a little bit more about these but first let's go and look at covers so the new tool is called the tangent designer so it gives you the option to make covers so let's take a quick look at how that works so you have two options you can choose a paperback cover or a hardback cover so let's go to paperback and you can do any of the sizes and shapes that KDP offers so uh, we'll choose this one and this is what the cover designer looks like when you go to it so you have your book title subtitle and your back text now what I'm going to do is actually show you a cover that I've been working on that I saved here you go you can see uh, here's a design here and this actually has a few I love how this looks it's just such a fun cover we've got the title text here and then I have a, a cover image here this is just a little jacket and then there's a shape on the back some back text and there's a pattern and I'm going to show you how I created this so let's start a new project 
and I'm gonna first of all go to patterns. So patterns is always here. You can see there's a whole long list of patterns that we've created for you and you can choose from any of these. So let's see, I'm gonna grab this one and it sticks it at the back for you. What you can do is actually change all the colors on the pattern. So I'm gonna go to my palette selector and I'm gonna grab, we'll use the mauve one again. And what I'm gonna do is change each of these colors from the pattern to one of the mauve colors. That one, and let's see, this one, that one, and we'll leave the black how it is. So you get this really cool effect. You can just change your colors to any of our palettes. And now the next thing I'm gonna do is go to TT Images. And we've added another folder of images here called Cover Panels. And these are really fun. You can go and edit these however you like. We've put tons of them in. Um, you've got like movie reels, a little television, luggage tags, speech bubbles, all kinds of things. The one I grabbed was the hoodie. I really like the hoodie. So I'm gonna put that there and I'm gonna choose some colors. So let's make the front of the hoodie blue. And we're gonna change the grays to match the pattern at the back. So you can see I'm just kind of like shortcutting this by just grabbing the colors from the pattern that we're using but of course I can use any of the palettes as well so we have oh, do I like that one at the bottom or do we want there we go and now I can just move this around I can bring my title and the title should jump actually to the front I'm going to get rid of the sub oops I'm going to get rid of the subtitle I'm going to make this a little bit bigger there we go and put the title on it, support that space. And I'm gonna center align that so it's, oh, it is center aligned. There we go. That's how you can create. So we can put teen journal, whatever we wanna put there. Um, you can put your text there. And then I just use shapes. So one thing I did was I put a shape behind this and reduce the opacity on that. So if we make it white, for example, send it. Uh, you can use shapes to kind of make things stand out. I changed the opacity on that uh, to, let's make it. Make it a little bit bigger. So it just gives a bit more contrast to the to the hoodie. But you can play with this, you can take that description. I really like using shapes at the back. So if you wanna add a shape at the back, you can do that. Um, you can choose a color there, to put a border on it. Thicker. And you can even do dotted lines as well. So if you want that effect, it looks really good on kids books, comic books, you can do dotted and dashed lines. And then you can put the book description here. There's a lot of Laura, that's a really long Laura Mipsum. Um, let's get rid of some of that text. Smaller, put it in the middle, and maybe make the text more fun. You can see that's pretty much how you put a book cover together. And you can change up the color schemes. You can really play with those color, sch color schemes and get it to look exactly how you want. You can use all of our palettes uh, to do that. So lots and lots of things you can create with the cover creator. I'm just gonna show you another way you can create covers. So let's make this a little bit bigger so it has a spine. And I'm gonna go begin on my project. Okay, so you can see there's a spine now. You can change this spine text by going to type. And you can just type here, which is much easier than having to like type vertically. So you can be like, I don't know, what, what should we call this? We'll call it Book of Ravens. And then I can go, I'll get rid of these, the book title, because we can add those back in. And I'm gonna go to my uploads and my demo project. And I think I have a cool Raven picture here. Let's see, there it is. So I can put this image right here so I can put my image here and then just make, let's see, I'm gonna make the spine text. I'm gonna make it uh, this color. 
and then I'm going to make the whole background. I'm just going to make that black. Oh, and that text. I'm going to have to change. So you can see you can make a cover really easily by just uploading images and putting them on your cover. So that's the cover creator. Pretty awesome. You have a ton of options. The, the key things that are useful for the cover creator are these patterns. You can change all the colors on them and you have your cover panels. So, I mean, you can just grab a, an image like this. I'm going to put it over here underneath the raven. And again, you can just like go and grab colors from the image here. So if you want to layer these up, you really get nice effects by using colors from the image itself. So it all matches, which is really, really nice. So you can experiment with that. You can go and add your text like that put it over there. And we'll make it black. There's a nice spooky, I don't know, the shadows into light that works. So we can put Raven journal here and change the size of it, make it bigger. And you can add your drop shadow, all the effects that you want to do there. So put a drop shadow and just keep playing with that. Boom. So you can, you can really play with this, have a lot of fun creating your covers. So the last thing I want to talk about is that we have actually changed our licensing to make it a little bit more flexible for you to create products using tangent templates. And there's a couple of ways we've done this. So the first thing I want to tell you about is TT files. So if you look across the top of tangent templates, when you're in the designer, you'll see you have several options. So you have save project, which just puts your project into the save files there. You have make template, which I showed you that just creates a template from your one page that you're on now that you can reuse in your other projects. You have PNG, which saves as an image. It saves your project as images that you can use. And you have your download PDF, which creates the PDF that you're going to upload to KDP or whatever you want to do with that PDF. Now, the other option you have here is a TT file. So if we click that, it says, would you like to export this project or import a new one? So we want to export this project. So we click that and it makes a little TT file. It downloads that to your computer. Now, what is awesome about TT files is that anyone with tangent templates can use that file. So you can use it in a few ways. First of all, you can use the TT file to move projects from one device to another. So if you have two computers, as I said, tangent templates, the fully featured version now saves all your images and projects to your local computer. So if you go in on the fully featured version from another device, you won't find your projects there. So the TT file gives you a way to transfer files from one computer to another. So you can work on them in two different places. A TT file is also really good if you want to work with a VA and have them work on your project. You can send a TT file to them to work on or they can send you a finished TT file back. Now, what's cool about TT files is they can only be used in tangent templates. So we really don't mind how you use our images and how you use our templates in the TT file because they can only be transferred to people who already have access to all of those images and templates. So we're very excited about TT files. What we want to do is see you guys use them. We want to see you build some projects in TT files, maybe share them with your other people, share them in our Facebook group if you like. And yes, you can resell TT files. This means that you can create planners, you can create your own workbooks for any purpose. You can make an Airbnb book, you can make a pregnancy planner, I don't know, there's, there's all kinds of things, coaching workbooks for different topics. You can make those books as TT files and you can sell them or share them or distribute them to other Tangent Template users. They will only be usable by Tangent Template users. Now, this is a really exciting way for you to create your own templates. And I mean, if you have an audience or you're an influencer, this is a really cool thing you can do for your followers for your audiences you can create specific books for them in tangent templates and send them the tt file and they can edit and customize it themselves so this is a way for you to create templates is by making a tt file basically send your whole project to someone else 
if you want to. Now, I should say this is at your own risk. You take responsibility for any transactions, however you're you're doing this, if you're if you're sending them through Facebook, you're selling them on Gumroad, whatever you want to do, it is at your risk. We take no responsibility for the transactions. Also, any content you include in the TT file is at your own risk. You should make sure that if you're sending the content to anyone else, be aware that they're probably going to use it to make KDP books or other products for resale. With that in mind, you should only include content that you have personally created or that you know you have the rights to distribute to other people who might resell it. If you use public domain content or artificial intelligence content, we ask that you make that very, very clear to whoever you're sending it to, because not everyone is comfortable with public domain content. Not everyone is comfortable with AI content. So we do ask that if you have a TT file, you add your own content, please disclose if you use AI or public domain content. And we're, we're putting all of this into our licensing. You can read all the licensing in more detail it will be here on the splash page here. You can read all the licensing information here. So I recommend you do that. Now, many of you have asked us about printables and digital downloads. And I can say that we have adjusted our licensing so that you can create digital products for end users. Now, there are some caveats with this, and this applies to PDFs or if you convert your PDFs to other file types. These rules don't apply to TT files. TT files, you can create templates, uh, you can create a whole big project and send it to people. Printables, digital downloads, or any other digital product must be created for end users. So what that means is you can create things like a worksheet for a teacher, you can create a coloring book for a child, you can create a planner that someone can print for their personal use. What you can't do is make any product that is a template. You can't make any product that competes with tangent templates. Um, in other words, it is a template product. So you can't make a PDF that says these are templates for KDP. You can't do that. You can do that using the TT files. That's why we've given you TT files. You can make templates using TT files. You cannot make templates with PDFs. However, you can make end user products. As I say, you can make things like worksheets, planners for end users or any other sort of, uh, you, you could create like an Airbnb book as a printable that is an end user product. So you can make that for a client of yours. Or if you're like a coach, you could create personalized uh, guides. Like if, let's say you're a personal trainer in a gym, you could create a guide for your clients and you can sell that or distribute that as a digital download. Now, do read the licensing very carefully because we have put some rules on that. You can't distribute our templates or our images as individual files. So you can't be like, OK, here's here's a template for spell paper and just sell that uh, because that's not cool. That's 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 our thing. You can't just resell our templates individually. You also cannot use more than five full page templates. So full page templates um, are basically any of these pages. Now we make exceptions for college rule, wide rule, graph paper, and dot grid paper and sheet music. You can use those, you can use as many of those as you like, but anything else you can't include more than five different templates. And if you use a big featured image, like for example, the debt snowball, that counts as a template. So you can't have more than five full page templates in your digital download or your printable. Also, you have to modify the templates. So for example, we've asked you to change the wording and also add a graphic element. So something like this would be fine. You could uh, distribute this, but no more than five of those pages. So it'll make more sense if you read the licensing, it's in there. But the gist of this is that you have TT files, TT files you can use to create templates for KDP books or for any other product you want. If you intend that template to be used for uh, your end user to create printables, you must follow the printable rules. And again, this will make sense if you read the licensing.
So TT files, you can create templates, you can send your whole project to someone. If it's any other format, like a PDF or any other format, like image files, however else you're going to do it, an ebook, it has to follow the rules for other products. So no more than five templates, no individual templates, and you have to modify the templates. So do take a look at the licensing. There's a lot you can do with this. If you're unsure, please either ask in the Facebook group, um, email us at support at tangent.rocks, and we can help you there. We hope that this gives you a lot more flexibility uh, to either make your own TT files and distribute your projects. We really want to see the community sort of sharing their ideas with each other and seeing how creative you guys can be with your TT files. And if you want to make end user products like printables, you can absolutely now use tangent templates for that. But again, just follow the rules if you're including our templates or if you're including our big images. You can, of course, add any of your own content you like. But again, just make sure it, any content you add is at your own risk. So uh, make sure it doesn't breach anyone else's copyright and make sure it's suitable for the platform that you're going to sell it on. If you put Mickey Mouse on that and you get like a big copyright violation, we, we can't help you with that. You have to follow the rules um, of copyright and also just any other rules that apply to platforms. We also ask that you don't use our platform to make anything offensive, hateful, mean, um, or illegal. Um, and if you do so, that is at your own risk. All right, guys, I hope that you've enjoyed seeing all the features that are in Tangent Templates. I hope you're excited by the possibilities with TT files. We would love to hear your feedback, good, bad. If anything doesn't work the way you think it should or you want it to, send us an email, support at tangent.rocks. Please be patient. This was a huge update. A lot of work has gone into this and we really hope you enjoy it. We have a lot more things to come. What I will say is that this upgrade has given us a lot more flexibility with the platform. It's made the platform um, a lot more sturdy so we can now go in and add new content. I would love to hear from you how we can help you, what we can do, um, what you would like from us. Please send any feedback, support at Tangent Rocks, and we will get back to you as quickly as we can. All right, have a good one, guys. It's great to be back. And zippy. Zippy. <laughs>